Well, we learned about a single event probability and we learned how we calculate the probability of your desired outcome, right? In this tutorial, we are going to focus on how do you calculate a compound probability? Well, the question of compound probability, it comes into action when you have more than one event happening either at the same time or in a sequential manner, right? So the basic concept doesn't change at all. The basic concept of calculating a probability of any event E in short written as P of E is still calculating the same way the number of your favorable outcomes to the total number of outcomes. Okay. But the real challenge that compound probability brings to you is whether those events are dependent or independent of each other. Okay. So we'll look at both of the cases because both of the cases will be utilized in understanding two different methods of calculating the compound probability. The very first one is what is known as a matrix method. So take a look at this scenario in which we are interested in calculating the probability of getting two heads when we flip two unbiased coins together. Okay. So we are talking about two coins. That means each coin will result in some outcome. Correct. And there are two of those. Hence, there are two events. Right. And we are interested in getting the probability of two heads. Okay. The way we will do is by simply creating a matrix. Let's say this is my coin one and you have your coin two. Okay. A coin one will result in either a head or a tail. Likewise, the second coin will also result either a head or a tail. Nothing more, nothing less. Right. So what exactly is the matrix in this structure is C we can create a simple tabular structure in which we say that if the outcome of my coin one is head and the outcome of coin two is also head, then you get this combination of outcome. If the outcome of coin one is head, but the second one is tail, then this is the outcome, right? And if the first coin results in a tail, second in a head, then you have this desired outcome and Finally, if both of them result in a tail. So the benefit in getting this matrix structure is that you are getting a space of all possible outcomes. Another way of calculating the total space of outcomes is, you see, each coin has two possible outcomes, right? So what we do is we simply multiply these two numbers and this is four. That is your total number of outcomes and we can write it here actually. So this is my total number of outcomes in the denominator. So our interest is in calculating only this one, the probability of getting two heads and how many ways that could happen. Well, that's where this matrix will help you a lot. There is only one possible ways because we listed all possible outcomes, right? So there is only one way that it could happen. So we will write in the numerator. So this is your probability of desired outcome, one over four, as simple as that. The important point, however, is understanding how the matrix method works. This method works best when you have two events, they both are independent and there are not too many outcomes from each event, right? And the reason we say that this is an example of an independent events is because if coin one results in a head or a tail, it does not control the outcome of your second event, right? Hence, we say that this is a very classic, very simple example of independent events. Now, let's take a look at a different example in which you will come across how the dependency could impact on the final outcome. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So let's take a look at another scenario. Alan, he has five marbles, two green and three yellow. If he draws one marble and then he draws another marble. What is the probability of getting yellow marbles in two draws? So here is a keyword that you need to be very careful about. Read the sentence very carefully. Alan draws one marble and then he draws another marble, right? That means two events are happening sequentially, right? So let's do this. Let's paint a picture of this entire process and that will help us understand how to calculate the desired probability. We have our first draw and here is my box. Right. This box contains two green and three yellow. These are all the possible marbles in the box. Right. If he picks one marble, then you would get either a green or a yellow because these are the only two colors in the box. Right. 
what is the probability of getting a green it will be simply you can get a green in two ways and you can get one marble in five ways that means your total probability is two or five for getting a green right and then the probability of getting a yellow is three over five now let's proceed to our second step and here it gets a little interesting so we have our second draw in this case the outcome of the second draw it really depends on the outcome of your first draw so you see if you had picked a green in first case now what is the new situation of the box now one green is gone that means how many are left inside you have one green and three yellow now what could happen as you pick another marble you could get either a green or a yellow again only these two possible will happen right so the probability of getting a green is what it is one over four because there are four total and only one green and probability of getting a yellow is what it is simply three over four right now what would be the case if your first draw was a yellow actually not the green so then you would have two green and you would get two yellow that would be the new condition of the box right and in that case what would be your outcome in the second row you could get either a green or a yellow right and what's the probability of getting a green is two over four because two green and four total so two over four and the probability of yellow is also two over four right so we are interested in getting this required probability of getting a yellow in two draws so how would you do that now you have this sequential calculation of probabilities and the reason it is very important for you to understand is there is a dependency of what happens in step one it impacts the result of your second event hence these two events are dependent events well in this case i'm interested in getting a yellow in two draws and that would be what that would be this path because this is my probability of getting a yellow in draw one if that happens then i would get something like this that my yellow could also happen here so this is my desired path right so that's one possible outcome in this case what i'll do is i'll simply multiply these probabilities so it will be three over five times two over four probability of yellow in event one and probability of yellow in event two that's one possible outcome right and that would be what that would be three over ten so this is your desired probability so the method that you have learned in this case is called a tree diagram method because as you continue to draw down your possible outcomes you will find that there are different branches and this could also be useful when you have more than two events and if they all are sequential in nature right so this is one method in the previous example we learned about a metric structure and they both are good method of calculating the compound probability well this is where we pause now and you could proceed on to your quiz and exam modules.